Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to Reality Hour. I am Adam Samuel. Uh, today, we are talking about America's Got Talent Season 14, The Darkest Timeline Edition. Uh, joining me for this podcast is Eric. How are you doing today, Eric? I'm doing good. Um, yeah, um, I before we started recording this, I, I was under the impression that only one act that made it through was worth swapping out, and now there are two acts for it that made it through that are worth swapping out. So I'm a little bit more negative than I was five minutes ago. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming into this week, as soon as I saw the acts that were competing, I started to get a little nervous because Me too. I, I looked at it and I'm going, okay, there are very few acts this season that I have somewhat of an investment in this season and just about every single one of them was appearing on this week's episode uh, so that just got me nervous a little bit right there and always as always got me thinking like why can't we break this up like why did it have to be all here and of my acts that i was invested in this this season not a single one made it out of this week alive i don't agree with that <laughs> my favorite, well one of my favorite acts got cut but one of my ever favorite acts stepped it up a level, and I'm hoping he has a shot at winning the whole thing now. Eric, not only did we lose all the acts I was invested in, we also lost my golden buzzer. Mine survived. My golden buzzer didn't even make it to the live shows. Mm-hmm. What is happening? Not only did they... They got the montage of death. Every act that I was enjoying got montaged, which... By the way, on, on the forums and people who I've talked to about America's Got Talent, they come, when I'm talking, they're like, by the way, did you notice that the acts that are in the montage, they never make it through? Did they say like, that? Yeah, I was like, if, that never, they never make it through. Montage yeah, acts. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> uh, but what, Eric, Eric, could you, could you break this all down to me? So I will say, of the acts that I was invested in, it was... Uh, my Golden Buzzer Act, the Shadow Dancers, uh, Ginzella, who I actually really enjoyed, uh, Michael Scott, and Izzy, oh, cool. and uh, what was his name? The Dancers. The, the Kid Dancers. Okay. Uh, you, you clearly weren't that invested because Michael Paul, not Michael Scott. And I, Izzy and I had one of the names, right? You had one of the names. Easton. Easton. It was Izzy and Izzy Easton. And Easton. Can you explain what happened here? Where did these acts go wrong? We'll go for it as we go for the episode. Um, I the, the one the only one I'm genuinely upset about is Michael Paul. His name's really not Michael Scott. Nope. It's not. It's not the guy in the office. Uh, yes, that's why I was thinking. I was actually watching The Office. I'm, I'm, I don't watch The Office. Um, <laughs> no. But. Yeah, we are we are going to be going through all the episodes. I I, sh I feel like th if there was ever a podcast for me to be dressed like all in black, like I'm in mourning. You should be dressed like all of a grace today. Just <laughs> I should ball, be wearing ball, like makeup. just like the downtrodden like. Or maybe Puddles Petty Party, either one. <laughs> and I should just, just have a little cloud. tear. <laughs> like <we're... laughs> that's how I feel on the inside after this episode because, oh my god, but. Anyway, we will get into all the episodes, into all the contestants. We will talk through all their performances. But I feel like before we can get into that, we can dive into it. There is one kind of elephant in the room that we need to talk about during this episode that, for me, kind of was the big distracting factor for me, which was, what the hell was going on with Julianne's hair? What what was that, Eric? <laughs> uh, it looks, I was very confused. Did it look like Lady Gaga-esque to you? I was just like, did did they replace her? Like she looks like a different wow. person. <laughs> I mean, I'm watching this going. I'm trying to pay attention to the acts, but what is going on here? <laughs> I, I just worse. I don't know. What what do you think was going on there with Julianne? I don't want to talk about her hair. <laughs> I don't. All right. Well, otherwise, uh, other points to really point out is. I, I started watching a lot of these acts, but I, when I rewatch them, I always watch them on YouTube. And for this, these crop of contestants in particular, the comments are pretty amazing. H have you read the comments of any of these acts? Like on YouTube, you mean? On YouTube. Yeah, some of them are a little bit distressing, but... 
But some of them, I will say, and I highlighted a few that we'll, we'll, we'll be touching on as the acts kind of come up, were, were really particularly hilarious. And every now and then, like, I, it's a sad moment when the, the comments make me laugh the most <laughs> watching, uh, not the comedian this week, but usually most of the comedians that are on this show. Uh, I got more of a laugh out of the YouTube comments. Don't you dare talk crap about Ryan. <laughs> I, I, I exempted him. I said not Ryan. Good. But otherwise, um, so you described, you said for the results, you were overall, what was your overall impression with it? I liked about verse 7 Acts Minute 3, right? Uh, yes. Uh, I, let's, let's, oh, let's well, go. Well, let's well, I should know that because Howie keeps saying it every single moment he can. So Take I a shot every right time. Now. If you want an America's Got Talent, there's only seven acts to make it through this week. There's only of the six seven, acts now. Of the seven, I like five. All right, so we have moving on. We have the unbeatable as the golden buzzer. Not going to dispute that they deserved it. Yeah. Dom Chambers, who I thought did step it up, and I think did Stepped really it up. deserve Much it. G Force, that I get it. Every episode, there's always going to be that one fodder act that kind of goes through, but but this this time we got two, which we'll talk about in a sec. Robert Finley, who for me, he's on yeah. the board. I would, I would maybe put him. I'm eight. fine with him going through, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed listening to him. But not at the extent of some of the other acts. But we'll talk on that a minute in a minute. Uh, we got this other act whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce, but they are the Danger Act that kind of opened the show. I think they were, um, they they were all wearing Perfect. turbans, and it was very very strange. And we'll be touching on them in just a second. Uh, Alex uh, Dowis, who who did what was essentially a light show version of the Sandak that we've seen in the past. Very similar, but we'll talk about it more. I liked it better, actually. And Ryan Niemlar, uh, who Eric is Eric's golden buzzer. So yet again, Eric's golden buzzer is making it beyond my golden buzzer. So, Eric, if you were to uh, be a judge on America's Got Talent and is able to shut down Howie Mandel's uh, opinions... How would you, if possible, maybe shift this uh, result up? Um, I would get rid of the first act at G-Force, and I would put through Michael Paul and probably Verba Shadow. Uh, I would definitely uh, toss – I would toss out G-Force, Robert, and Beer Kalsa, Kal- Kal- <laughs> try to say. And I would throw in Verba, my, my golden buzzer act. Um, I would throw in Izzy and Easton. And for the last one, I would put in Michael Scott. Michael Paul. <laughs> Michael Paul. Uh, yeah, that – but that's – that's there's a big difference. And some of these acts – it's getting me a little nervous, Eric, for the season. I mean – Okay. I, I, I don't know. I the, the thing that I keep going back to when I'm watching America's Got Talent is, why can't the show be great? Like, we <laughs> have the makings, the somewhat makings of a good season. And <laughs> you can't even stick with that for, like, a I'm minute. The, the, if I'm a mile away, like, squinting, I can maybe think it's a good season. And yet... It just keeps getting bogged down. We're losing people that I think really could have added to this show. And I think they got the montage of Doom, but I don't think they deserved it. Some of these acts that we saw the glimpses of were really strong. And to just see them kind of tossed out, it's it's like some someone once said, it's like the main character of a show just died in the first 10 minutes. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm going to be ranting a little bit, I can tell. But anyway, do you have any uh, final overall thoughts before we kind of start to dive yeah, into it? Let's the dive into it. All right, so first up, we have, is it Burr Kalsa? Beer Kalsa? Don't ask me. This is really embarrassing. <laughs> Eric is lucky he doesn't have to try to pronounce these names. Yep, and that's deliberate. <laughs> so, Eric, I don't even know how to describe this act. How would you, how would you explain it? It's the dumbest danger act I've ever seen. The, the guy is holding something or there's something around him, and someone's smashing it with something dangerous. We've seen it with yeah. a guy with a sword. It's kind of just a different packaging of the same exact act that we've seen in the past. And the act kind of show, starts off with – they have this giant freaking spear just, like, set up, and they start – like, they demonstrate how, how it can cut through a watermelon. And then one of the guys goes on it and starts doing whatever it is that they do. 
And there was a cutaway where Terry Crews looks at the camera and goes, don't try this at home. And all I can think is, where are we going to get one of these giant spears? Like, how does he expect us to be doing this at home? Um, but uh, uh, what, what did you think of this? I said what I thought of it. The dumbest danger act I've ever seen. I wrote down in my... Go on, I'm sorry. That's it. That's all I have to say. I just wrote down, what's the point? (laughs) Like, I can't watch this for two minutes. How am I supposed to watch it for, like, an hour and a half? It's it's going to be at least... And you know we're going to get more time than most of the other act next next time we're on. Yeah, and the question... I I just came along with this... Came away with this question, why? Like, Mm -hmm. yes, you can do this, but why? Like, why Mm -hmm. why do we need to show this? And the other thing that I was thinking was, how does someone kind of discover that they have this talent? <laughs> you know, I'll tell you how this started. It started with like, these people were probably, they were, I, I don't even know how to describe this. They were just like, hey, what if I took a sledgehammer and started whacking ice off of you? <laughs> like, where, does, where, where do people get ideas like this from, Eric? I don't know. Maybe Jackass on TV would have something to do with it. Maybe someone's someone's watching an old video of Jackass and saying, "Hey, I can do that, except not get hurt." I wish I, I just wish I had the sense of creativity that these people had. We can call it creativity, sure. Might as well. <laughs> this is what you discover, like when you're drunk and you're just like sitting around and you're you're kind of in that like whacked out stage, and then you're like, "Dude, I have an idea that's gonna win us a million dollars." <laughs> No, no, that's the tequila guy. That's the million dollar drunk idea. Who, by the way, was robbed. Nope. <laughs> no, all right. He wasn't robbed, but I really enjoyed it. Great. <laughs> anyway, um, the one thing that other thing, there are a lot, I keep saying the one thing, but there are, there are a lot of things that I actually have in this notes. There's one guy who's over seven feet tall. Eric, this guy's a beast. Have you, did you, what, did, what were your thoughts on him? Not really many thoughts. I kind of fast forwarded for most of it because I was under the assumption that a, an act this dumb wouldn't make it through. And then Adam told me, oh, they made it through. I'm like, what? Oh, well. I don't know how they made it through. Honestly. That's why. I, I, I could have sworn that they didn't, but then Adam told me they did. I'm like, oh, why don't you check that? And yep, they did. Somehow they made it through. Just the fact that we're going to... How, how are we going to have to do another... What, what more does this act have to do? Except for like retreading previous things, I I don't know. I don't know. Fire will be involved. We know fire that. will be involved. All right, well let's move on to G Force, um, who is the other act that made it through. I'm I'm starting to notice that the first act always makes it through on these shows. By the way, I just wanted to point out, like on these uh, judge cuts so far, I think in the past also, uh, going first, going in the first part of the episode is usually like death. But going first of the first, good sign. Anyway, G-Force. They are Five. They're like a younger girl version of uh, One Direction. Is, is that an app comparison? No. No, it's not. They're just for the five girls who should be in Kids Bop. That's a comparison. One Direction, at least, you know, their songs weren't so cheesy. They're a little cheesy, but they weren't like this cheesy. And... The the girls weren't bad. They seemed to they seemed cute, but we're not gonna make it past next round. We can all agree on that, right? Yes, we. There's gonna be how many? There's gonna be three weeks of uh, three rounds uh, of live shows. They make it past round one. I will eat something. So, I would I would. <laughs> you you heard it here, folks. We're gonna we're gonna remember. I said that. something. I'm, I didn't say what. It'll be like an apple. It'll be a, it'll be a, it'll be a, Bit of chocolate is what it will be. All right. Well, G Force they perform a song. I'll be eating my feelings away with chocolate. <laughs> they perform a song that is it's all about Simon Cowell. Which right there, how how old are these girls, Eric? Too young Not, to be thinking about Simon. The, the one thing that I was thinking is, I don't believe that they wrote this song. I believe like some producer, probably an America's Got Talent producer, kind of like crafted it and kind of handed it over with like a shiny bow. That's just what I think. Um, yeah. It, it, you know what this act feels like to me? It feels like pandering. Like oh, Simon absolutely. Cowell 
No, no, like on a meta level, like Simon okay. Cowell and the judges, they love when acts talk about yeah, that. Yeah. And they're like, there were, there's so many acts over the years that kind of, they get through just because they involve the judges in their like song that they've written. And Simon Cowell, more than anyone else, loves to hear his own name said. And there are other people who like to hear their name said in the world who I can't talk about. But not on the panel. Not on this year's panel. Not on this panel, but in life, there are people who like to hear their name more than Simon Cowell. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, I'll be honest, when I was watching them, I was thinking they're 100% going through because the producers, pretty too much <laughs> the producers are going to be like, <laughs> we put all this oh work in to get more out of it. That, we had some guy locked in a room forced to write a song about Simon Cowell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a joke, by the way. Ah, uh, my God. Um, every year that we had Yumbo Dump, we had... Oh, no, this is better than Yumbo Dump. I'll say that. In a finale, in a, in a post-apocalyptic finale <laughs> of Yumbo Dump and G-Force, Eric, who's getting your vote? The sweet release of death is getting my vote. <laughs> I'm giving my vote to Yumbo Dub because wow, and we've gone so far down on that sinking ship. I'm gonna go all the way down. We're gonna take the ship all the way down to, to the well, pits of hell. It's not different from my answer, I guess. <laughs> um, do you think though, Eric, this is the end of us hearing original songs from G Force, or do you think we might be uh, going back to covers? Next round. Um, I don't know. One thing I did notice, that, and I've kind of been starting to notice more on these shows, is they focus a lot more on original music, um, which I will say is one of the rare positive things I kind of have to say about yeah. this. I think on America's Got Talent, you shouldn't be allowed to do covers very often. They should really de-emphasize them, because you can go on Idol or The Voice to do covers. On America's Got Talent, you say? Yeah. 100%, I agree. And I will say, it's one shift that I... It's not often that I give a thumbs up to uh, to the producers, but this is this is a win, I will say. Uh, it's a little victory in uh, in the grand scheme of things. It's like in, in The Handmaid's Tale. Like, it's just the little, the little tiny changes that kind of uh, make the big difference. Uh, do you have any final thoughts on GeForce, Eric? Nope. All right, let's talk about... Uh, who's up next? The montage we have Olivia Calderon. We we get seconds of this lady, and I remember her being pretty good in the auditions. She was um, pretty good. She was like B plus. She, was, yeah, she wasn't singer. good enough to make it through, and it was kind of hard to watch her sing in this montage. I couldn't really tell what I thought of it from it. There's not enough. That's yeah. the thing. The, it's, there's never enough in because, a montage because they're also montaging her, which is basically dooming her right there. They're only going to show. The like one or two maybe brief moments, if any, that there was uh, 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 when they stumbled. You know what I mean? Because yeah, absolutely. They, That's what we did for Michael Paul. I'm assuming because I'm assuming they couldn't. Have, he could no. The audience didn't sit in silence the entire freaking act. I'll tell you that much. Well, that was editing. Because was, if you're gonna have two thousand people, like at least one of them is gonna laugh at the at the joke. Yeah. But anyway, Olivia Calderon. She was the Spanish singer. Um. Like I said, I thought she was pretty good. I, I kind of was almost a little bit expecting her to make it through, kind of from the auditions. Like, we always get that that one big voice singer during these rounds, almost like every week even. But, uh, yeah, she's she's montage. Do you think we're, we're missing out on anything by uh, by her not continuing the competition? Not really. Sorry. That's a little, bit, that's a little harsh. But, yeah. I think you're being a little hard on her. I, I know I, I am. She was good. She was good. I mean, she was better than G-Force in the first half. So. I, would, I would have been more... I wouldn't have been 100% okay if she were advancing over some of the acts like uh, Michael, who... <laughs> what's his last name? You should take... People who are watching this should take a drink every time I say his name wrong. Well, you know the episode title is... Michael Paul. Is, um, it's going to be something related to Steve Carell. I'm going to figure out what it is. It's happening. Stay calm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Olivia Calderon, Montage of Doom. What are you going to do? Next up, we have Dom Chambers. He is a magician. 
in the vein of Collins Key, who we've seen in the past, uh, do you were you uh, a fan of Collins Key when he appeared? I did not watch that year. No. He he's he was an actor that was on America's Got Talent. He's done well on YouTube. I know that much. He's done really well on YouTube, by the way. A, a bit of a tangent just right now. I actually watched one of his videos and it literally burned my brain while I was watching for how dumb what he's done because he used to be this really talented magician like really good sleight of hand and his acts are now his his youtube videos are now these pandery like kid screaming videos of them throwing things <laughs> you you need to check out one of the, one of his videos if, if you haven't seen them it's it's like one thing you need to do once in your life or just never in your life because uh anyway uh, Dom Chambers, uh, he is one of those acts. I, I do remember his audition. I vividly, he was the guy who did the beer chick. Back then, I kind of really immediately discounted him. I thought, this is, it's a small act. It's not going to be anything big. But of the contestants that appeared this tonight or yesterday, he is one of the few, if maybe even the only, Eric's going to disagree with me, who I think stepped it up. I disagree with you. He's one of two that stepped it up. He just stepped it up in a bigger way than my favorite because I didn't like his first audition, but my god, this presentation was clever as hell. I loved it. He's in my top three of the night. He's going to go far. Yeah, he's going to go really far. He's not going to win because, you know, Shin Lim, but he's going to go really far. I, I think he's got a shot. I don't – to I win, know. I think he's got a shot at top three, honestly. I think so, too. And I got to say, if he delivers like this, on this level of what we're getting of a season, first of all, he's, he's going to have a fan base. The suit's going to be, in my opinion, as much as Eric might disagree with me, I think Dom is going to be our takeaway moving forward. I disagree. All right, well. He's one I, of the two. He's one of the three takeaways. But all right, well, he gets, he gets the most improved award for me of this night. Oh, definitely. And um, I, he has my attention. I'm like, all right, good. You're, you're the, in my opinion, one of two acts that stepped it up. So he better not let it. He's, he's got some steam in his train. Like it's starting to, it's starting to pick up. It was kind of like in a horse race. It was all the way in the back, and now, now it's towards the front. So uh, he's got a shot here. So I hope he doesn't mess it up. Okay. Uh, did you have any other thoughts on him? What did, what did you think about uh, Dom? Nothing else, really. I, I I liked it. Clever as hell. For, for trick with a trick with a typical prediction trick, I could probably if I thought hard enough, I could figure out how he did it. But I didn't care because of how clever a presentation was. So. How did he do the iPhone part? I was watching it with it someone, and they were like, oh, it, it was a video. Like he was, it was just playing a video or something. How did? Yeah, how do you think? It was playing a video. But then, how did he? How did he do the trick with the 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 shot or whatever it was what shot uh he does it with a drink where he pours the drink out of his phone but that, that's a, a slight hand thing there's a there's something in the phone or something the thing so is that, a, you you can do that type of trick pretty easily all right well the other thing that i always wonder is when, when they talk on these shows like about foods tasting like i was thinking oh that's just like any liquid that's just painted red and then he ha he offers it to julianne with her ridiculous hair and he's like, take a shot. And she says it was a real, it was an alcoholic drink. Yeah. Do you think, do you think she was like telling? Yeah, she was telling the truth. I see magicians do similar tricks. I don't know how it's done, but it's, it's, it's possible. Like I said, very impressive for me. Uh, Dom, he gets an A. He, his presentation gets a 100% an A. Yeah. All right. Really quickly up next, we get Mac, Matt Ricardo. Uh, he... I have no I idea what him. You didn't see him. I, I saw him. I have no idea how to describe this act. We, he is another montage of Doom act. Oh, and good. he takes a knife, and he takes his hand, and he takes the knife, and it, he whacks it into his hand, and it kind of looks like it's cut through, but obviously hasn't. He pulls it out, and that's all we got. That's, that's all that happened. Okay. Montage of Doom. Next. Montage of Doom claims another victim. Mm-hmm. The, there, there's two deadly things on Earth. There's death, and there's the montage of two. Uh-huh. Uh, next up, we have Lamont Landers, who is another rare name that I remember from the auditions. Uh, he 
he had this whole stick where he was arguing with he was one, the only contestant i think ever has pushed back about simon cowell asking for another song am, am i correct yeah and honestly he's not good enough to justify fighting back honestly for me i thought he did pretty good job honestly he, he it, was okay. it was okay it wasn't it wasn't great i give him an a for creativity I the thing is I thought this was such a good act good good week of acts that I thought he just was gonna be lost in the shuffle no matter what. Yeah. But I'm gonna give I'm gonna make a prediction right here. And Eric, you can you can quote me on it. I'm putting my money down. We are going to see this guy again. Whether it be on American Idol, The Voice. I don't think we've done with this guy. I think he's gonna show up somewhere else. Okay. And uh I mentioned uh, the YouTube comments on these acts, and I actually went to Lamont's uh, video, and I looked down, and there was one act that uh, that really perfectly explained it, and it was, if he was on The Voice, a country singer would send him home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 100%. And uh, one, of the, one of the moments where I was like, Good job, YouTube comments, because that one actually got me to laugh. Do, do you think that's an apt uh, comparison? Someone would send him home. I don't know if it'd be a country singer, but probably. Next. All right. Well, let's move on to uh, a three-person montage of Doom. Wow. Uh, two acts of which I really enjoyed, and neither of them are Michael Scott. Michael Paul. First up, we have uh, Adeline Bates, who we talked at length, I remember, in her audition segment on uh, when we Saying were Saying that th- this, this is already done. You can, this is over to go from here. What? You said there's nowhere to go from here. Then exactly. Julia's on the same thing. That it's like the bucket full of talent. I, I've yeah. used this comparison in the past. Some acts, they kind of have like a bag of tricks, and they take that bag and they just dump it over. And Adeline is one of those examples because – her whole shtick is that she sings like uh, Phant- Phantom of the Opera? No, Two-Face. Two-Face is a better comparison. Um, and she performs Endless Love. And yeah, this was just, there's nowhere for her to really go because she's not the best singer. Her shtick is that she does a shtick. And once... <laughs> That's like a bushes and love all. That's a bushes and love all of these. Her shtick is that she does a shtick. <laughs> I'm not wrong. Am I wrong, Eric? It's not wrong, but it's just so obvious. It's like, I, it's like when Bush said, "I believe that human beings and fish can coexist peacefully." Yeah, no one, no one thought that wasn't the case. <laughs> uh, are are you upset that we're we're missing? Is there anything you feel we could have maybe gotten from this act uh, in the future? Nope, not really. All right, now we get to the rough part. Yeah. Now we bring the mood down, and we, we change into black. Uh, we have Michael Paul. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I keep getting his name on. Uh, Eric and I, I believe, we're, we're pretty high on his audition. Or he's kind of in the vein of Paul Zerdin. Yeah, literally. Uh, when, I, when I wrote my recap of my top ten favorite auditions for MJs, he was my number one. I like Ryan more, but I, I grew to like Michael Paul more. I like Ryan more now, but... But they were neck and neck for me, and I'm pissed that Michael's gone. We only get a couple of seconds of him, really. We get there literally a good one couple of seconds. But I'm sure there were a good couple of seconds that we didn't get to see. This guy has clearly been doing this for a long time. Like, he's got custom puppets. He's He, he, he knows what he's been doing. And we get literally one joke. And it's a joke that's not exactly the funniest, but I – hate the editing of this segment yeah. because as he says it it just cuts to silence and this is what i've said we touched on a little bit earlier where they need to justify that they've cut him so yeah. they've kind of they're doubling down on the couple of seconds of what he said and then kind of throwing on some producer's trick to kind of make it look like no one laughed when there's got to have been at least one person <laughs> like yeah they're told it's a comedian they're they're primed to laugh the audience I don't believe there was it was it cut to absolute silence. It didn't because Vicky got laughs. <laughs> Eric is coming for comedy. I'm not coming for comedy, I'm coming for bad comedy. Or comedy that isn't as funny as some of the other people. You know, 
for me, being a comedy lover of these acts on the show, I'm just so discouraged because we haven't really had a good comedian. The last time yeah, we have. I really laughed at a comedian was hysterically laughed, like was absolutely like bursting out laughing was Paul Zerden uh, during With the Howie um, one. When Howie man, that was that I, was the that was that that's the high mark. That was the funniest, the, the most I've ever laughed watching America's Got Talent ever. That act when Howie started working. Oh my God, I'm gonna start crying. But <laughs> that that was that 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 act will never be beaten. So we have to accept that and move on. In my opinion, it's it's might actually be one of the greatest of all time America's Got Talent performances. Just, oh, it is for me. It is the greatest of all time. I can't think of anything I've ever heard before. <laughs> anyway, Michael, Paul, there's no way he could live up to what I'm hoping, but I'm, I am still hoping for an act that can make me laugh, and I, it bums me out that we didn't get to see any of these other acts, and we got, we're got we left with Simon kind of really slamming him hard, like saying the act was really bad when we didn't get a chance to fully see it. Yeah. And I feel like it's not fair for us to make an opinion when we're getting such a crop. Clearly loaded. It's like they set him up, and... Uh, it upsets me. Mm-hmm. Do you have any other thoughts on Michael's, Michael Paul? Um, no, I, I don't. I don't. I don't watch The Office, but I can't make any good references now. Rip in peace, Michael Paul's AGT run, 2019. 2019. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I remembered Michael Paul, and I also remembered. Jenzella, who I remember not fully laughing, but like getting a few chuckles out of me. Uh, I remember. I, I remember him walking off and walking back on twice. That was what I remembered the most. It was, that's, I, that's remember all I, remember. I don't remember anything else. Not the funny thing is, I'll be honest, I had I had totally forgotten that she was a singer. Is, she, is it a she? Is it, what are we supposed to call? <laughs> I don't know. I apologize. I know it's not it. But I don't no, know what it is. Because it's a drag act, so, but... Yeah. Ginzilla. I'm going to refer to, to Jinzilla Gin- as a she, just because I think that's the correct term that you use. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that it wasn't a great act for me, so I'm not mad yeah. about this one. So, so what I was saying was that I remember Jinzilla more as a comedy act than a singer. I remember... I actually don't even remember her singing. I just remember those... Yeah. Those funny moments. I love that personality. I loved what what she was giving, and I feel like maybe it was because Shinzilla didn't get to walk because this was filmed before her audition aired that she maybe didn't realize that she is more comedy than music, like than singing. Mm-hmm. Maybe this is also could just be that we didn't really get to see her full act, but I think that she doubled down on the wrong thing. I think she should have doubled down on comedy and the fact that she didn't from what we saw i don't know this like this is me going off an incomplete result uh an incomplete kind of picture that she doubled down on being a singer and that was the wrong thing to do i i can kind of of the acts that i was really pulling for i would i understand jenzilla being cut kind mm-hmm. of do, yeah do you i fully understand it and i'm ready to move on well i just want to say i really i really enjoyed jenzilla uh, okay she was awesome. Next up, we have a name we haven't seen before, which is really rare. It is, I, I don't remember a time when we have an act on the show who appeared, who didn't appear in the auditions and appear during the judge cuts and made it through. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, is, is this the first time that's ever happened? I don't know. All right. Well, it's Alex Dowis, Light Art Show, who, as I said earlier in the show, does what is essentially a video projector version of the sand acts that we've seen in the past, where they kind of, he, he uses lights to kind of paint a picture, tell a story. Um, very, very impressive act. Uh, what did you think? I think it's, the, it's obviously the comparison to Ksenia from Champions earlier this year is very similar, but his method enables more motion in the act, which actually draws me in more. I love this more than I love Ksenia. This is such a clever way to tell a story, and I loved it. I I just loved it in my top four of the night, easily. Do you think it's a coincidence that his act was kind of all about the moon landing when we just of had Of course that? not. Of course it wasn't a coincidence. 
Yep. Uh, I, I will say. <laughs> there are no coincidences on America's Got Talent. I will say another thing that one thing I'm always in awe of, of America's Got Talent producers, is their, like, ability to perfectly time things. Like, there would be a song that kind of just came out, like, probably just coming out as uh, they're filming, and they would have a contestant sing, so that by the time their episode is actually shown, that song is now a hit. And I'm always kind of in awe of when that happens. It always really impressed me. This is another example of just them knowing to plan ahead. And for me, this act was a winner. What do you think? Easily. I have, no, I have no negative to say about it. I just really enjoy this start to the fish. I, this is another act that I think is a contender for finale night, honestly. Easily, definitely. Um, if he can keep this momentum going, he kind of came out of nowhere, but I think he came out really strong, which maybe makes me think that maybe he didn't have that great of an audition and maybe Clearly. they were trying to protect him. Yeah. Uh, and I, is I'm it? fine with that. Uh, yeah, so... Very impressive act. Uh, I, I enjoyed this. This was it was cool. It was it was yeah, different. honestly I, I I would have considered this for the golden buzzer along with the next act. Yes. Uh, I, I wouldn't have been uh, I would have agreed. I, for me personally, if I was going to give it to anyone, I would give it to Dom just uh, because he I thought stood up the best. Uh, I, I don't even need to ask you, Eric, who who would get yours. Am I am I correct? You're right, because I already gave him mine. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have The Unbeatable. Uh, they're a young dance crew from India. Uh, they are very high energy, kind of flips, flips dancing choreography. Flip back, was it a backflip and just sitting in a chair above a pyramid? It was a backflip, right? Uh, yeah. That shit was insane. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it was... Okay, this was really impressive. Totally valid choice for a golden buzzer. I will say, there were moments during this act that I was like, whoa. Yeah. Really impressive. There were some really cool tricks. For me, though, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit critical. I feel like I've seen this act before. Like, I have too, a lot but... of times before. And not only that, it's just, it's so played out. I'm, I've seen what happens to acts like these in the past, and it just... Oh, they're not winning material, but my God, they were impressive. They were impressive, but there's so many acts, Zuccaro, like so many. It's it's like they copied and pasted that to now. And for me, that's just, I feel like I've seen it before. There were, like I said, there were those couple of tricks that they did that I thought were 100% unique and they totally deserve praise of. But I, I didn't enjoy it as much just because I was like, it's not as impressive to me. America's Got Talent has kind of, desensitized me to these acts and uh the, the cynical terrible part of me even was almost looking for mistakes just because that's what the show has kind of primed me to do but if i'm trying to look at it from an objective standpoint they're they're really good what, do you do you agree with or do you think i'm crazy i think we can just go with yes we've seen it before yes they're not gonna win but they are really good and they deserve to make it through yep uh, and they get the golden buzzer uh, from our, we almost forgot to talk on him, uh, Dwayne Wade. Uh, was this warranted, in your opinion? Yes. Speaking of, what, what did you think of Dwayne's, uh, Dwayne's judging this episode? Didn't really much, see much of it, honestly. Co-signed. Um, yeah. So, otherwise, any final thoughts? Let's talk about the next montage of Doom. Almost everyone who got montage this episode just, it, it hurts. It's like... Because uh, I, I was I was caring for these acts. I was like hoping they would make it through. Uh, first up is Izzy and Easton. Um, I, I totally forgot the boy's name, but uh, they are a they're they're dancing trio duo, but not in the vein of what we've seen in the past. They they are one of those rare like um, different acts that kind of take a spin on a regular thing, do it differently. Maybe that's just because the producers are kind of pushing them. I really thoroughly remember enjoying their audition. They were, like I said, one of my favorites. And we only got a couple of seconds from these guys, but what I saw was really good. Really good. What, what, what do you do think? They were good. I didn't really watch much of it because the monster was doomed. I think they were robbed, honestly. I think. Yeah, I, I, you can make an argument that a lot of people were robbed. I don't really watch them enough, close enough, so I can't really say. 
Well, I was really high on them. I, I'm bummed that we're we're going into the live shows. I think we're missing something moving. It's like it's like sitting down for a meal and it's like got everything you want. There's like there's steak, there's I don't know, there's chicken wings, but there's no like mashed potatoes. There's no like that that one thing that you kind of were hoping would make it through. And I feel like the whole picture kind of suffers for it in my opinion. Because like I said, these two are really impressive. Okay. And even just as bad, we have a Dem show who was one one letter away from my name. Uh, I, re- I vaguely, vaguely remember their uh, audition. I, I actually Googled it, and I think it was – I thought it was really cool. Do, do you remember their audition? It was a Mortal Kombat video games-like one. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was really impressive, and I'll be honest. I thought it was impressive here too. I thought both of these acts should maybe be going through. Maybe. And I think had we seen their full picture, had we – we rolled out the red carpet as we did for the uh, whatever those guys were doing in that first act. Like they would have made it through. I, I, it, it does. It feels dirty that we had that they got done dirty because we didn't get to see everything. Because mm-hmm. I think that these two, this segment in particular, was that they were trying to hide that maybe these acts were deserving of it, but we got to make room for G Force. Yeah. Bullshit. It's just, it upsets me. But otherwise, let's move on to my golden buzzer. For the last time, uh, Verba Shadow. They are a shadow dance troupe um, in the same vein of what we've seen in the past. It's it's predictable and played out, but it's predictable and played out. Like, I know what I'm going to get from this act, and I'm stunned that they didn't make it through. Of all the acts, I was thinking they had it shot, so they... The, they do this story. It's another story. And right away, as they're cutting away to the judges, I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Like, they're, whenever a judge is, like, talking over, confused, that's a bad sign. Yeah. And, uh, the, the, the judges, Simon and, and Howie, were actually saying, like, oh, it's, it's Harry Potter. And another guy – and one of the other one, whoever wasn't saying the first one, was like, no, it's the Wizard of Oz. Which, by the way, in my notes, I wrote down uh, – what did I say? Um, I wrote down, I made a typo. I wrote The Wizard of Ox, which I thought would be a really good show. Can you imagine The Wizard of Ox? Eric, what, what would happen in The Wizard of Ox? I don't know. There's an ox, and it's a wizard, and it's got, like, it's got a hat. It's got a cape. But anyway, um, the thing is, they were criticizing them for kind of not being familiar. And in my opinion, that's a very bad thing to do because – this was an original story. It wasn't Harry Potter. It wasn't The Wizard of Ox. It was its own unique yeah, thing. Yeah, that was The Wizard of Ox. But I, I feel like, I don't know why, it's it's like what we talk about in, in like Hollywood, how movies are kind of, we're in that cycle where everything is familiar. We're getting re-releases, sequels, prequels. And I feel like the judges were kind of... No spin exactly. like The Wizard of Ox. Judges were... <laughs> I would watch that show, but I feel like the judges were kind of trying to put that into the them into that kind of similar category. Oh, they're trying to to make them. Oh, it's Harry Potter. Oh, it's the Wizard of Oz. And I was thinking, why can't it just be an original act? Like, why does it have to be something familiar? I I enjoyed this act. I actually really enjoyed it. I think they deserve to make it through. I don't get the criticism. I think they deserve to make it through as well, but I wasn't as broken up about it as you were. I'm sorry though. Uh, just it makes it makes me a little bit upset. Yeah. Let's talk about the next thing that'll make you upset, shall we? Yes. All right. Let's move on to Robert Finley, who I remember his audition so uh pretty well. Um, I remember was, oh, I remember the episode called? title it gave us. What? I remember the episode title it gave us more than I remember anything about the audition itself. I'll be honest. I, I have a bit of a, of a confession. I have went back and rewatched his audition song. It's not terrible. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it's got a nice B. I, I kind of liked it. Um, what, what are your thoughts? But regardless of the audition, of the performance he gave this in this episode, what, what are your thoughts on, uh, on him? I like him. Great voice. Can he win? Don't think so. Enjoyed listening to him, though. Um, Simon is such a bullshitter about why you left Idol. Let's talk about that for a second, shall we? Go for it. 
because he said, oh, we le- I left because p- people like you wouldn't be allowed to idle. That is horse shit, and we all know it. You left because you wanted creative control. And you wanted to own the franchise. So you got made X-Factor, and X-Factor USA was garbage. So, In my opinion, there was a time during Season 9 of American Idol where Simon Cowell was in a coffee shop. He was sitting all alone. And he, he's got, like, a piece of paper in front of him, and he's trying to figure out what's going to happen. And he wrote down the reasons why he wanted to be on a different show. And I am thoroughly convinced that, number one, the number one reason was he wanted creative control. And the number two was he wanted old people on it. Like, this was... No. I mean, that's, that's the vibe. I, I was being a little cynical there. But I liked Robert. I... I, I, I in my opinion, he's like in that awkward category where I know what's going to happen with this guy. He's going to perform live during the live shows. He's going to make it through the first live. And then the second live, he's going to either okay. open the show or be criticized for something. They're going to do it gently, let him down gently. And that will be all she wrote. And yep, I feel like we could have given that spot. as He deserved to make it. I... I I cannot deny, like, I can't argue he deserved to make it, but I feel like we suffer long-term. He's kind of in the now. He's he's a good thing now, but I think he's going to he's going to fizzle out, where I feel other acts who are kind of maybe just coming into their own could still maybe grow. And I feel like with Robert, we're just going to get the same old that we've seen in the past. Can't say I disagree, but like, I also can't argue with the fact that made it through. He's really good. Uh, this this song wasn't he does an original another original song, uh, which I believe he wrote. Um, but I, was I, this I like another the, sex song? Um, I didn't listen to it enough times to make a full decision. decision. Okay. Uh, but yeah, very very good. Um, any final thoughts on him, Eric? Nope. All right. But who's what, up? What, what, do fast forward for the next two, please. We'll we'll touch on them really quickly because they yeah. were. The, We'll give them more attention than America's Got Talent. <laughs> wow. Duo Fusion. They were a husband and wife duo. Um, they, they're they in the same style of the Masuda brothers we saw last week. It's it's a strength act. They kind of do really – right yeah. I would say really impressive shit that they do. Like, yes, I was watching – I could do it. But – How they said that. Him, but uh, he, he, this guy, he lifts his wife just like in a sit-up and – Really good, I, and that's all I really, can really say because it, it was the montage of doom. And there wasn't enough of a story behind the act to make it really stand out for me, so that's what, that's the problem with the tip act. It's not their fault. That's the show's fault. Oh, oh, absolutely. I meant like the presentation of the act itself. For an act to really like this to succeed, they didn't have like they didn't have like something presentation wise. Hard to explain, but now let's all talk right. about David Williams' honorary golden buzzer act. Valerie Sassyfras. Is, is that her real name, Eric? God, I hope so. I will say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you beat me Can to you it. Imagine yeah. Yeah. This, this act would have totally gotten the golden buzzer from David Williams on Britain Got Talent. Totally. Uh, yes. Totally. Let me just set the stage. So she is... I, I, I don't know if she's like a comedy singer because I don't know if she's... Is she in on the joke, Eric? I don't know. I don't know if have you have you have you seen um what's her name the the, the singer who played the piano talk about the crumble song I do uh, remember that was the, one of the rare moments from that season I watched wasn't that awful yeah it's in the same it's in the same vein it's very similar um and this is one of those acts that I need to refer back to the YouTube comments like I mentioned because I I read the comments and <laughs> the top comment was. This is the crackhead energy I want to have in life. <laughs> <laughs> I will say the YouTube comments, like you're missing out if you, but anything past like the number one is usually bad, but that one is gold. <laughs> like I, I was laughing. I, I went out, left out, let out an audible like laugh. I was like, <laughs> it's pretty good. I, pretty. I feel like the YouTube commenters should kind of band together and make like one comedy routine. It, it would, it would probably end up going really far off the rails and going, South like very fast, but for for a time I don't want be... I don't want to talk about YouTube commenters right now. All right, but I will say that that one thing got made well, me. Lo- I'm gonna take nice things on our videos, in which case we love you. Yes, 
Yes. Um, yeah. So this act is, it is what it is. It's a fodder act. It's, it is. <laughs> it's, unashamed, it's unashamed in what it is, which um, I can, I can appreciate it for. Like, I feel like it, I don't know if she's really, ha- I don't know if she's in on the joke. I, I, I like to hope that she's in on the joke, but um, this is, it's an act that's here to go home. It's, it's a, a it's, it's, <laughs> here today gone tomorrow but uh the one thing there was another big point that i had it's um as as a commenter on on these shows um i listen to a lot of music um when i when i go to the gym when i go uh, bike riding and i always like to think like i'll have a song come up on my ipod and i'll be like oh this would be a good song like if someone performed it on on american idol the voice or america's got talent but then i'll listen further into the song and they'll they'll be like an overtly sexual lyric and I'll be like, oh no no no, th- th- this this would not work. And yet, and yet this this act had um, what was the I I, I don't I even want to it, but it... a, a, a not PG PG appropriate lyric in the song. And at that point, I'm like, I just like shrug my shoulders and go like, how does it happen? Like why can't like we're, we're because we're... the act was like towards the end of the night where most of the kids were asleep. But still, isn't the show a family show? Like, how does that song get approved? I don't know. W- was this an original? I don't know. And we'll never know. We'll uh, we'll if never you're watching know. along to this podcast, uh, let us know in the chat uh, if if this is a, a real song. Oh, God. Uh, but, yeah, that YouTube commenter. I, I, I agree with that YouTube commenter. I wish I could have that kind of energy. I just wish I could be that enthusiastic about anything. Uh-huh. Anyway, next up, uh, closing out the night. Yes, it is. I'll, I'll pass this off to you, Eric. Uh, why don't you tell me about the last act? Ryan E. Miller. I want him to win. Funniest comedian I've seen on AGT in years, possibly ever. Um, I watched another routine of his online today. First of all, this routine was great. But I watched another one that he posted on his YouTube page today. And my coworker and I were cracking up in the office. We were, like, having trouble holding it in our laughter. Um, I feel vindicated from, like, a little bit of choice. I was like, this might be a crazy one. I don't think it's so crazy anymore. This was another really funny routine, well presented by the show. He had a sob story, but it had nothing to do with his disability. Kudos. That's a twist I didn't like. I mean, I liked. Um, I mean, I prefer if he didn't have a sob story at all, but I'll take what I can get. Um... Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Really funny. Eric, Ryan is so good that you and I are going to be bitching about how in two weeks he is in the bottom four and needs to be saved by the judges. I hope you're wrong. I hope I'm wrong too, but as I was watching this, that was the vibe. I'm like, he is totally going to need to be saved. Like, there's going to be a time... And uh, it, that is going to be a whole rant. Uh, for me, I didn't really get the United joke that opened the show. Uh, opened I got it. it. United loses things all the time in luggage. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I, I paused the video. I was like, I don't get it. But, but yeah, that That's makes sense. That was a great joke. That was like a great opening joke. Because it was like he lost his hands. And I was like, is there some joke where they, 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 they take United hands? United breaks guitars. You didn't hear that song? I, you have I, to I, go after this video ends. You have to go Google United Breaks Guitars. It's an old viral internet video that's glorious. All right. Well, for me, Ryan didn't fully get me to laugh, but he got me to smile, which is rare. Yeah. Like that's that's a, for me. I was watching it like like I wasn't laughing, but I was. Yeah. I had a smile, which more than most uh, comedians can say. Um, do you think he's got a shot at finale, finale, or do you think I'm maybe correct? I hope he makes a finale. I hope he wins, but at the very least, he needs to make top five. I if Samuel J. He... Comro can make top five and Nikki Barbalat can make top ten, Ryan can make top three, right? It's trailer nasty, Eric. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything, and that's the point. All right. So that is our episode. So like I said, moving on, V Unbeatable, Dom Chambers, G-Force, Robert Finley, Beer Kalsa, uh, Alex, and Ryan. I agree with three of the acts moving on. Boo. Uh, Eric is booing me. 
Uh, who? I agree with five. All right. I'm going to ask this question, and I know it's just going to be. Do you think any of the acts that we lost tonight might be a wild card? Yes. Who Who do you think has the best shot? Um, of them, Verba Shadow is possible. Um, kind of, sort of possible. Um, very long one that very long act that I think is really possible. All right, so that is kind of our episode, and we uh, – will we ever find out the secret of Julianne Hofsair? The secret is within us. Uh, I, I, here's how you know I'm tired. I, I'm, just, I'm just having trouble talking and coming up with things to say at this point. Uh, yeah. All right, well, then I will just say – I am Adam Samuel. You can find me on Twitter at Adam Soapbox or on my two websites, adamsoapbox.com and adamcblog.com. Where can we find you, Eric? EricAsher.com, Eric underscore Asher on Twitter, Eric Asher on YouTube. And I'm seeing Piff again this weekend. You got to ask him to be on our show, Eric. I'm more interested in asking him for questioning him on BT Team of Champions, and that's why they didn't let him on the real show. That's my question for him. All right. Do you, do you have any inside information for next week uh, moving forward? Uh, do you know nope. any action? Nope. nope. Uh, there's probably some on the America's Got Talent wiki. Uh, there, there is, but I'm not checking it now. It, it's sad for me to say that I, I, I I'm a little bit down this season. Like I, I used to, I, a lot of my interest kind of died tonight. Is what I will say. Died with a montage of doom. <laughs> that's that's what it's gonna be. You're gonna see Adam on the show, me just like talking, and that it'll be montage, and that'll just be it. And then Howie Mandel will say, "I feel like you didn't step it up." That'll be it. Bye, everybody. Guys, we will be back next week. Uh, see you then. Until next time. Peace.